Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, October 28th. From the San Antonio Express News, my name is Luis Vasquez, and this is your Express Briefing. All of the stories you need to know to start your day. You can expect mostly cloudy skies and a high of 66 degrees in San Antonio today. As voting kicked off in Texas earlier this month, Governor Greg Abbott was pouring money into state house races to keep the lower chamber in Republican hands. You can read more about where his $1.9 million in donations went at ExpressNews.com. A heavily edited video released Tuesday by a conservative activist group purports to show a Republican campaign employee in San Antonio interfering as an elderly woman fills out her absentee ballot in Texas. And now let's move on to our top stories for the day. Before securing a $39 million federal contract to help feed the hungry, a San Antonio event planner told the U.S. Department of Agriculture he had a relationship with the local food bank and had been in contact with others in Texas, a claim the food banks say isn't true. San Antonio Food Bank CEO Eric Cooper said he had no knowledge of Gregorio Palomino or his company Create a Date in April, let alone an agreement. Cooper said the first time he met Palomino was via Zoom on May 11th, three days after the contract was awarded. Tom Orsborne has been following Create a Date and the Food Box program since spring and has an update at ExpressNews.com surrounding the emails Palomino sent the USDA and his bid, which the Express News obtained under a Federal Freedom of Information Act request. A spokesman for Mayor Ron Nirenberg said late Tuesday that Governor Greg Abbott had agreed to drop San Antonio from his planned weekend deployment of Texas National Guard troops to major Texas cities in advance of the November 3rd election. When the Guard revealed Monday that Abbott wanted the troops in position to respond to disturbances after the election, observers found the situation unusual to the point of extraordinary. Abbott has not explained his reasons for the directive, saying nothing about it in his official web pages and Twitter accounts. His office hasn't responded to emails and phone calls. A guard spokesman did not return an email and text Tuesday night. We have what you need to know about the situation so far at ExpressNews.com. Before Andrea Lupo quit San Antonio's Sterling Foods to join rival Lone Star Bakery in May, her former employer alleges she conducted some clandestine activities. The night before leaving Sterling Foods, Lupo allegedly downloaded to a USB drive various files containing a significant amount of its trade secrets and other proprietary information, according to a lawsuit the company filed last week in San Antonio Federal Court. The files Sterling accuses Lupo of taking contained recipes, ingredients, financial reports, and inventory and raw material costs. Patrick Danner takes a closer look at the suit in his latest article. The chances of Representative Trey Martinez Fisher, Democrat out of San Antonio, becoming the next Texas House Speaker hinge on the votes of Texas flipping at least nine Texas House seats from red to blue, enabling Democrats to gain a House majority for the first time in 18 years. His decision to file for the speakership a week before Election Day, however, was meant as a brash statement of confidence that the election will go his party's way. It's a bit like Michael Jordan only packing enough clothes for one game when the Chicago Bulls had to go to Phoenix with a 3-2 lead in the 1993 NBA Finals. If Democrats do gain a House majority, Trey Martinez Fisher's chances will be bolstered by something hinted at by outgoing Speaker Dennis Bonin more than a decade ago. Gilbert Garcia explains more in his latest column. Get ready to vote with our 2020 Texas Voters Guide. Our comprehensive survey of the candidates in key national, state, and local races, along with voting frequently asked questions, help you get ready to cast your vote. You can check out the interactive guide at the link in this episode's description or by heading over to expressnews.com. Next up are your need-to-know headlines. You can find all of these headlines and more inside of your Express News subscription.
As the coronavirus crisis deepens in El Paso, San Antonio and other Texas cities are helping to relieve the pressure on its hospital system. In response, 10 to 15 COVID-19 patients per day will be moved from El Paso to other Texas cities. Mayor Ron Nirenberg and Conservation Society President Patty Zions announced Tuesday that next week's planned Fall Heritage Festival at La Villita has been canceled. A national group of statisticians says the data does not support Republican claims that voting by mail increases the risk of voter fraud. The Pre K for SA East Education Center will reopen today after COVID 19 test results of four year olds were negative for the coronavirus. The campus was closed Monday and Tuesday after four staffers and one child tested positive for the virus over the weekend. Amid a recent increase in suicide attempts at the Bear County Jail, three more inmates tried to kill themselves in separate incidents, according to officials. Nine inmates have tried to kill themselves this month, while 11 attempts were made in September. How many stamps are needed to mail a ballot? How can you vote if you haven't received your mail-in ballot? We're answering readers' questions at the link in this episode's description. Amazon is planning to build a data center on the far west side according to state construction documents. The company expects to start work early next year on the project dubbed AWS Rockfish in filings with the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation. Nearly three years after a pair of Trinity University students created a smart cap for pill bottles, their innovation has entered the market at an independent pharmacy in North Texas. The three campaigns pushing to put San Antonio sales tax dollars towards training workers for new jobs, expanding public transit, and continuing the city's early childhood education program have spent more than $750,000 trying to convince voters to pass the measures, according to new filings. Electricity demand is unlikely to return to normal levels even after the development of a coronavirus vaccine, according to a new report by scientists from Columbia University. With polls showing Joe Biden still doesn't have enough support from Hispanic voters, his campaign launched five new Spanish-language ads airing in Texas and 10 other states. Teachers in the Northeast Independent School District say they are being made to work in unsafe conditions after the district last week completed its campus reopening timetable, allowing the return of any student who wants to, despite a local rise in coronavirus cases. The leaders of three local teachers' union gathered Tuesday morning to set the record straight about a television ad being aired by Representative Steve Allison against challenger Selena Montoya. The 78209 zip code has emerged as an unlikely political battleground. Express News reporter Joshua Fector joined the Poodle Politics podcast this week to discuss this and other issues. The simple announcement at the airport gate that your plane is boarding has gone through a COVID-19 revision. At least on Delta Airlines, the message has been changed to emphasize that the plane's sanitizing is complete, making it safe to board. A recent flight on Delta made Randy Diamond feel like the air travel gods were protecting him with their cleansing powers. Read more about Delta's approach to convincing reluctant travelers that flights are safe in this week's Wary Traveler. At a time when taking your children out for a little fun can also feel a little scary, mobile zoos safely bring the animals to you, to birthday parties, office classrooms, scout meetings, and other settings. Most mobile zoo animals can be best described as cute and docile, rather than fierce and dangerous. There are no lions, tigers, or bears. In David Zamora Casas' new Dia de los Muertos-themed installation, the artist hopes to underscore the parallels between the coronavirus pandemic and the global AIDS epidemic. The installation at Beale House Arts can be seen virtually and in person. The new season of The Mandalorian on Disney Plus tops our list of what's new and notable in home entertainment. 
Buckets Burgers and Beer Garden, a new restaurant and bar on the San Antonio's east side, will open Thursday for limited lunch and dinner hours. It's located inside the former home of Big Lou's Burger and Barbecue. And that's all for today. This was your Express Briefing for Wednesday, October 28th. My name is Luis Vasquez. Please consider becoming an Express News subscriber to get in-depth coverage on all the stories you heard today. Also, be sure to rate and review this podcast inside of your Apple Podcasts app as it really helps the show. Have a wonderful day, everyone.